Russia's largest heavy lift rocket in decades failed to fire, and now the behemoth is falling back to Earth. Experts say it's probable that big parts of the giant rocket will hit somewhere on Earth. Russian newspaper Moskovsky Komsomolitis reports that a 20-ton segment of a large Russian rocket is falling out of control after its third stage failed to fire a second time. The rocket failure happened a few minutes after Russia's third test flight of its large heavy lift rocket, the Angara A5, started without a hitch. The huge rocket was loaded with a dummy payload that simulated the weight balance of a satellite. The first two stages had pushed the rocket into near-Earth orbit, and the third stage had fired once successfully, when it was supposed to fire a second time to push itself and the payload to a graveyard orbit reserved for parking dead boosters. However, the per se booster failed to fire correctly, leaving the booster and payload stranded in low-Earth orbit, and experts calculate that the 20-ton structure will start falling out of the sky, perhaps on Wednesday, December 5th. Most of the structure should burn up in Earth's atmosphere, but some parts are expected to impact somewhere on Earth the next day. The Angara rocket is the first heavy-lift launch vehicle used by the Russian space agency Roscosmos in decades. Satflare and Aerospace Corporation are tracking the out-of-control rocket and are providing maps and statistics about it on their websites. New details have emerged about last week's frightening incident when a freshly docked Russian module started firing its thrusters, causing the International Space Station to flip backwards one and a half times during a dramatic 47-minute tug-of-war. Here are the details. Gizmodo reports that NASA has provided new information about the accident the International Space Station suffered on Thursday, July 29th. The incident happened some three hours after Russia's Nauka module docked to the space station. Russian crew members were working to integrate the module when its thrusters suddenly fired, trying to pull the module away from a space station it was securely docked to. The worst part was that Nauka was configured so that it would receive commands only from a ground station in Russia, and the next pass over Russia was 70 minutes away. Unable to disable Nauka's thrusters, Russian controllers counteracted the momentum by firing thrusters attached to the Zvezda service module. Fearing this might not be enough, they also fired thrusters on a Progress cargo ship docked to the station. This 15-minute tug-of-war finally stopped when Naoka's thrusters suddenly cut out for reasons that are still unclear. With attitude control regained, the flight controllers were able to right the ship. NASA maintains that the crew of seven was never in any danger, but Harvard-Smithsonian astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell told Gizmodo this was one of the more serious incidents in the 24-year history of the ISS. The loss of attitude control, he said, risks breakup of the entire structure. Russia has conducted a controversial missile test in space, with consequences for the International Space Station. Here's what you need to know. A Russian anti-satellite missile test blew up one of its own satellites on Monday, November 15th, according to the BBC, resulting in 1,500 pieces of trackable orbital debris and causing astronauts on the International Space Station to shelter in capsules for safety. Political reports that Russia did not warn the U.S. about the test in advance, and subsequently, the seven-member crew of the ISS, which included three Russian cosmonauts, was instructed to shelter inside the Soyuz and Dragon crew capsules for two hours, according to NASA. The space station is now passing through or near the debris cloud from Cosmos 1408 every 90 minutes, though there is no need to shelter beyond the second and third passes. More broadly, the BBC says space debris is a rapidly worsening situation, with roughly a million to one to ten centimeter objects floating in uncontrolled orbit of Earth, and Time magazine pointing out that much of it is moving at over 17,000 miles per hour. Part of the explanation for this is that Russia is not the first country to shoot down a satellite in this way, with India, China, and the US also having done so previously. However, the BBC also points out that space junk is a much broader phenomenon, arising from 64 years of activity above our heads, and this was emphasized in May this year, when NASA released photos of a small hole that had been punched through the ISS's Canadarm2 robotic arm by an unknown piece of debris. NASA said the robotic arm worked normally despite the damage, but the ISS also had to perform emergency maneuvers three times in a year before that in order to avoid separate collisions, according to Science Alert, and unfortunately, while larger pieces of debris can be tracked to help with this process, millions of smaller fragments are too small to be tracked. Ukraine's intelligence chief says Russia is preparing to invade Ukraine, and Moscow created a refugee crisis in Poland to make it harder for Europe to fight back. Here are the details. 
Bloomberg reports that the U.S. military is preparing for a possible invasion of Ukraine by Russia around January next year. The news outlet says multiple sources say the Pentagon has shared intelligence with its allies showing a buildup of Russian troops and artillery that can quickly turn into a rapid, large-scale push into Ukraine from multiple locations if President Vladimir Putin decided to invade. Satellite images and other information shows that around 100 Russian battalion tactical groups, comprised of around 100,000 troops, could quickly push into Ukraine from Crimea, the Russian border, and via Belarus. Bloomberg sources also said Moscow called up tens of thousands of reservists on a scale unprecedented in post-Soviet times. Such reservists would be used to occupy ground taken by the battalions. Ukraine's intelligence chief told the Military Times that Russia is preparing for an attack by the end of January and that the attack would involve airstrikes, amphibious assaults, and an incursion through Belarus. EU member nations, including Poland, have also accused Russia of encouraging a refugee crisis as its ally, Belarus, funnels migrants toward the EU. Ukraine says the refugee crisis was created by Russia to destabilize the EU in preparation for an invasion. China used a strange way to complain about Elon Musk's Starlink satellites doing to the Chinese space station, what China had been doing much worse to the ISS since 2007. Here are the details. The Guardian reports that China has complained to the UN about having to maneuver its space station twice to avoid it getting stuck by some of SpaceX's Starlink satellites. In a report that Beijing submitted to the UN's Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, China complained that its space station had to use collision avoidance procedures in July and October to avoid a collision. China also called on the U.S. to bear responsibility for the Starlink incident. This comes only years after China used a missile to blow up one of its satellites in 2007, causing a huge cloud of space debris that forced the International Space Station to do collision avoidance maneuvers multiple times to get out of the way of Chinese satellite debris. Jonathan McDowell, an astrophysicist at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, told The Guardian that China was not innocent when it came to creating collision risks in space. He also said that it was highly unusual for a country to lodge a complaint through what he called an informational bulletin to the UN. Meanwhile, Chinese state media outlet Global News claimed that so-called experts said the two incidents show that Starlink satellites were being used by the U.S. to test the Chinese space station's ability to respond and maneuver. Some U.S. observers believe the complaint was created as an excuse to suppress Elon Musk's Tesla car company's market share in China. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.